Hello everyone, welcome to Code with Femi. In this video, we're going to be looking at Visual Studio 2022. It's so amazing how technology keeps advancing. And I'm glad to announce to you that Visual Studio 2022 is available and you can actually download it for free. Um, right in front of me is actually the visualstudio.microsoft.com website where you can actually, you know, download the free version. And also if you want to purchase the, the paid version of Visual Studio 2022, you can also do that. But in this actual video, I want to install the, the latest version of Visual Studio, which is Visual Studio 2022. And actually just, you know, show you guys you know some of the features it's got and um also like get you guys to start using it so um let's just jump right straight into it so the first thing you want to see as you can see we've got visual studio we've got visual studio for mac and as well as we've got visual studio code and the one i want to download is right here so under this download visual studio you can see there are diff there are three versions here which is the community version the professional and the enterprise the community version is actually for you know your developers your individual developers academic um, for academic uses and as well as open source if you want to use it for open source like developing open source software you can actually download it but you just have to click on this and this would actually um, should you know start the actual um, downloading of the executable program that you can install on your computer you can see right there this is actually already downloaded for me and then i can just click on that as you can see um it's gonna there is actually a, a, a visual studio installer that might pop up on your side as well and basically the video visual studio installer is actually where you manage all the different visual studio installations um that that you have or that you want to add once the visual studio installer actually opens up this is what you're going to see you're going to see the um the different uh you know types that you can actually include as part of the actual installation because if like you can actually just install it as it is and you can see right on uh let me just a little bit away from my from my head so you can see what it looks like you can see that it says um 862 mb but as you actually start including different, um, you know, different packages, you would see that the actual numbers are going to start coming up and you can actually just decide what, you know, what is really, what do you want to add, you know, into your Visual Studio for you to actually do your, your software development. So for me, I am going to install this because I need that um, actual ASP.NET and web development because I do that and also i because blazor is one of the new features now and you need WebAssembly assembly as well as part of that so you just have to ensure that that is actually checked i do azure development as well so i'll check that um I, i'll leave python for now I, I, because i i make use of a different id for python and also we've got um xamarin we can install this later but i just want to keep it as simple and as straightforward so that we can actually get you know going and we can just see what it's got so i'm just going to keep it as basic as possible and not really you know include too much so you can see that that the space the actual um uh, space required now is like 9.18 gig that is actually required so i'm just going to keep it as simple as it is now but you can actually install all of these different ones if you want to develop you know if you want to do gaming if you want to do like some things like around data science or machine learning you can actually install if you want to build your own extensions and you want to do sharepoint development and as well as you want to develop you know for for linux using c but for for this actual demo i'm just going to keep it as basic and as simple as possible so let's just install it as you know and let's see what happens as you can see visual studio 2022 has been installed and you can see right there it's there it's actually free for, for students open source contrib contributors and individuals this is quite amazing so let's launch it and see what happens wow 
This is so amazing. I love this flash screen. It is beautiful. I think they've really, you know, did a very nice job there. That is so nice. And here we are. Visual Studio 2022 is up. And as you can see it right there, we can just create a, a new project. Let's create a new project. Let's just create a simple console app. I'm just going to select uh, console app Let's to the side. Then we click on next. Then, yeah, we can just keep the default for this actual demo. And you can see right there that now we've got Visual Studio um, is now running for 2022 is running .NET 6.0. So once you install Visual Studio 2022, it should be working with the latest .NET version, which is quite amazing. <laughs> And click on create and that should actually create our actual um, console app for us and then we can see what that looks like this is what the console app actually looks like in visual studio 2022 um, running 6.net 6.0 you can see right there that they've actually like um, removed the the namespace um, the the class and you know all those different um, you know, structure that we used to have in the previous version. So they've actually trimmed all of that out. And this is actually going to be a very good thing for someone that is new to C Sharp. Um, this is very good because you just have to worry about the code you implemented. You don't have to worry about all the noise and all of that. And, and I think that is really a good thing they've done. And, you know, this to me is really nice. And they refer to this as minimalist code where you, you know, it's just as, you know, as little code as possible for you to achieve your goal. I think this is really good. And you might be asking now, okay, what if I want to like add namespace and all of that, like, you know, what what can i do in that scenario but the thing is you can still add the namespace the way you used to so let's just create a class we'll call this class um sample one we'll call this class sample one and inside of sample one you will see right there that there's already a namespace but check here there's something you can also do now with namespaces you can actually convert them to be file scoped let me just zoom this in so you can see what that is saying i'm just gonna right click on that and click on quick actions and refactoring so you can see there convert to file scoped namespace i'll click on that and check that out isn't that nice so now your namespace is actually scoped to the file you don't have to wrap it around class that means that i can have as many file you know as many as many um classes i want to within this space and i, I feel like that is actually really really nice i can have you know sample sample two and they will still and these two classes will still belong to the same namespace so this is pretty you know this is pretty nice what i've done and another thing that i've also seen is that in here so you don't have to explicitly set all the usings anymore especially like the ones that are actually built into the actual you know into your actual uh you know solution or the actual dotnet frame um, .NET framework you don't have to really explicitly set them already because there is actually something they've already you know included in the latest version and i'm going to show you that now let's edit project file so you can see what i mean in there you can see now that there is actually implicit usings so you don't have to always like um, in each of your class file always add all the necessary using anymore now they've actually made it easier so if i take this out just pay attention you see that i've taken out all the using i have there but still i can still do a list i can still i can still i can still call a list and see there get sample i'm still i'm still you know i'm still coding which is beautiful you know let's just return um let's return let's return you know an empty list but you can see right there now that the list is still uh, being you know identified but there are cases where for instance i want to let's say i'm adding an external library into my solution let's go to nuget packages let's manage um, go to nuget packages and actually see if we can install um newton soft uh newton soft yeah newton soft um dot json so this one let's just install this because i want to like serialize my my actual um you know my, my actual list before i return it out so i don't want to return a list of um you know integers anymore i want to return uh, a serialized object so i'm just going to so that is installed now into my 
into my solution uh, my project this project and in here i can now say i want to return back string okay and then in there i can actually even do it here to say json convert dot just gonna zoom out a little bit serialize object okay then let's open bracket and then we'll close bracket there and then in there you can see that i can now use that using there you can see it it's setting it explicitly there right and the the thing is you'll be wondering now that okay but that means that i still have to add this into another class let's say that i have another new class let's say i have a sample 2 class I'm just gonna create that quickly as well sample 2 2 so we have a sample 2 class and i'm just gonna grab those implementation I already have on sample 1 so that we can just um quick with this okay we have so we have this two now right which is we have a uh you know these two classes returning you know this this actual you know collections and they are both referencing this actual namespace which is newton soft json right but now you're wondering like but, but we're still gonna be having to you know do this but guess what they've actually did a global using now which means that you can actually have a single file so i'm gonna create a single file and i can add all of my usings in there and it's gonna affect all the you know the the different classes i've got within you know my solution so let me say global i'm gonna just call this global using usings right inside of global using now i'm just gonna clean this up because i'm gonna use it just for using you know for for my namespaces just gonna copy that out and then i'm gonna put that there and you will see that it's actually like complaining now that no i can't find this it does not exist in the current context right but guess what all i need to do in front of this is to say global and if you go to that class you should see that this is actually going to pick it up now and everything should just be fine uh let's see global using.net okay it just it just took a while but you can see that, that <laughs> this is actually it's actually fine now right <laughs> isn't that amazing like this is really nice and you can see that, that in there in the in the actual step one you can see that it's actually just you know it's telling me that i can re easily remove this because it's not really needed anymore and i'm also going to show you guys now how you know like for real if like how the to show you that it's really working so i'm gonna just i'm gonna split all this into like separate separate sections so you can see i'm just gonna you know do this yeah because i can do anything i like with vision so these are you know sample one sample two we have the global using there right in there i'm just gonna remove that actual user i want to remove it okay and save it guess what all the files all the classes that i that needs that namespace would now start complaining isn't that cool so you can actually control your using from just a single file rather than actually having them everywhere in your code so i think this is actually very good you know a good feature they've actually added and the actual last one i, I would like to show you guys is the actual auto reload that is actually one thing that also like they've actually came up with which is you can act you don't have to always restart or recompile your code every time you debugging let's say for instance you have so i'm going to create a scenario here i'm just going to say hello world a couple of times right and i'll put a breakpoint here on line four and what i want to do is i want to run this console app okay so we're just going to run this console app and what i want you guys to pay attention to is the the actual code right everything is saying hello world hello world and I'm just waiting for this to actually start up so I can actually show you guys what I'm referring to. Because in this scenario, we have hello world, hello world, hello world. But there might be a case where there's this specific line of code where you feel like, no, I want to reply with something else. Okay? You want you don't want to reply with the same you know, hello world, hello world. And I'm going to show you guys now that you can do that on the fly without actually recompiling your code. You can change it, save it and everything should still work as normal right so the the first thing i, I would like to um do is i would like to just 
let's just move this um to the side move my my visual studio i just want to reduce the actual screen because i want to put my my screen side by side okay let's just do that okay let's collapse this i think it's too small okay yes and then let's just do that okay i think we can even play with more space actually um there and then just go up there more space okay more space yeah thank you then let's just um let's collapse that so you can see there that we've actually you know if you if you check what is on the actual terminal that i have on my on on the right you see there that we have hello world hello world twice right that means that it has actually executed these two lines of code right and then the next one is this one hello world that is about to execute but on line on line five of that place i want to change this to my name to say femi okay i'm gonna save that and you're gonna see what's gonna happen i'm gonna do that as you can see it's saying applying code updates so there are cases where it's gonna it's gonna you know show you that and there are some cases where it wouldn't really even show you that but just check what is gonna happen now if i scope there you can see it's like i don't have to recompile the code i'm still debugging but i'm changing the code as i go along and in here i can actually say i want this to be youtubers okay let's save that and then see what is going to happen now and you see that like this is amazing i can also even go back and replay it again let's go up and then it's gonna start from the top again but now i want to now put everything as my name my name you know i just want to like play with you know with diff with all of these lines of code so you can see and at the end i'm just going to say thank you so much um thanks let's say thanks so much thanks so much okay then we're just going to say youtube um, youtubers viewers okay and then check here you can see right there it's actually just on the fly you don't have to recompile the code this actually saves us a lot of development time like because i know there were times where i have to always like recompile the code and that actually stresses me out i can tell you that this is actually a big win for me in terms of you know like delete you know developing debugging and changing code as we go along and fixing issues quickly as fast as we can and i think this is actually very nice and well done to the guys that to the guys that actually worked on this and i think that um yeah there's more there's more to the you know to what they've done but i'm just showing you guys like the things that are you know that i've picked up that are quite exciting to me and even in the auto load now you can even actually you know uh, check on that to say that you want to like do the auto reload on file save that means that um you know we don't have to always like restart or anything you don't have to kill me and keep on keep, keep on clicking on this because you can also click on this to actually do out reload so but yeah that is just what i want to show you guys i hope you guys actually enjoy this video and i hope you guys are going to download visual studio 2022 and start you know developing you know amazing software you know doing machine learning doing data science doing you know python doing xamarin mobile stuff and you know there's just a lot yeah i will see you guys in my next video keep well